Victor Gao, who is a chair professor at Su Chao University. Victor, thank you so much indeed. We know you've stayed up late to be with us on the news hour. What possible countermeasures could Beijing take as it's threatened to do against the United States? Well, first of all, this Washington's action is very much to be condemned and to be deplored. And it leaves China with no other option but to uh, retaliate tit for tat. So you should expect one of the consulate generals in China of the United States to be closed very soon, within 72 hours. This is the only right thing to do now because of the abrasiveness, aggressiveness of the U.S. policy. Okay, well, let's wait to see what happens because there are reports uh, in the international media that that will be the U.S. consulate in Wuhan that uh, Beijing will order the U.S. to close. What about the fact that every action has a reaction, Victor? Is there any sense here that Beijing should have been prepared and should understand that its actions are going to prompt the United States to either issue statements which are antagonistic towards Beijing or take concrete action like has been done with the consulate in Houston, Texas? Well, first of all, even though the United States have come up with all kinds of uh, accusations or allegations, which are very much unfounded and far from being true, the real problem with the United States is that it cannot tolerate the prospect of a China growing and growing and eventually outgrowing the size of the United States. But such hysteria, such extremism, such desperation are very much well uh, wrongly placed because the growth of China is a mega trend. Whatever Washington will do will not change the course of this mega trend. I would say in about 10 years time from today, China will be significantly larger than that of the United States. So the decision makers in Washington need to uh, realize that and come up with uh, to terms with the prospect of a larger China. Whatever Washington does, with a war or without a war, cannot hold China down to the ground. A larger China, a more impactful China, is what Washington will need to deal with. That is the mega trend. And I think there are people who cannot accept that. They want to really do whatever they can, even though what they do will be at the cost of a fundamental interest of the American people. If the American leaders are really serious, put up with a good fight against the coronavirus, save more American people, prevent more American people from getting infected. That is the real fight. Fighting against China, come on, it's a fight of futility. We know, and I believe that probably most people watching an international news bulletin will know a lot of the issues that have caused upset, shall we say, in Washington. A lot of it is bilateral, but there's one issue that's very much an international one. And Victor, I don't really want to get into the defense that Beijing is putting up for his actions in the South China Sea. About 20 to 25% of all of the world's trade that passes through the world's waters goes through the South China Sea. And we know that over the past few years, China has been claiming more and more of the South China Sea by building fake islands, by putting its military in those waterways. And there are at least five other countries. So it becomes a big international issue, the South China Sea. That's one thing that could have an international impact. Should China be taking a little step back and not imposing itself so much on something that's so important internationally? I'm not now talking about bilateral situations between the US and Beijing, but about China's international impact that you're alluding to. Thank you very much for raising the South China Sea. Do you remember in the Second World War, who sit on the South China Sea islands and atolls? It was the Japanese occupiers. They occupied all the island and atoll and reef in the South China Sea. When Japan unconditionally surrendered, do you know to whom? Did Japan surrender all these islands? It was to the nationalist government of China in 1945. And do you know who assisted the nationalist government of China to reclaim all these islands and atolls and reefs from the Jap Japanese occupier? It was the American Navy who helped the nationalist government of China to take over all these islands. Do you know in 1945, 
the current day countries like the Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, they even did not exist. They were colonizers. Uh, they were colonies by European and American countries. So this is the reality. Do you know which country really have the best data about the real situation in South China Sea? It was in Tokyo, in the war archives. It was in Washington, in the war archives. It, was, it is in Taipei, in the war archive. And it is in Beijing. This is the reality. The Americans know for sure what's happening in the South China Sea. Now they made a complete change with what purpose? They want to stir up more trouble in South China Sea. China's legitimate right in the South China Sea was not created by the People's Republic of China today. It was dating back at least to the Japanese unconditional surrender in 1945. This is history, and I hope you, a great media company, can do solid homework to realize what exactly you are talking about as far as the South China Sea is concerned. Okay, Victor, we always appreciate your time. Thank you so much indeed. Victor Gao from Suzhou University in Beijing.